Hello and welcome. Hi Maureen. How are you? It's Monday the 11th of January and here we are back in the She Shed for another week of evening worship, thought for the day, prayers, whatever you really want to call it. I'm so pleased that uh, you've taken some time out of your day to be with me when there's so many other opportunities for you to worship online. Um, thank you for being here with me. In God's loving presence, we unwind the past day, starting from now and looking back moment by moment. Let us gather in all the goodness and light in gratitude. Let us attend to the shadows and what they say to each of us. And let us seek healing and courage and forgiveness. Let us ask God's help to set us free from distractions in this prayer time. Let us invite God's Spirit into our hearts, to open our hearts, our minds and our lives. better system for lighting this candle. We light the candle, a reminder that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Emmanuel, God with us. So let us seek Jesus that we might know and love and serve God more. Amen. Hello Babs and hello Eleanor. Yesterday in church, wherever that was for you, whether it was at your kitchen table or in your lounge or maybe even from your bed, you may have, you may have had a lie-in and yet still worshipped. Uh, for me, worship took place here in the She Shed. The set readings for yesterday were, um, two of the set readings were from Genesis and from the Gospel of Mark, the baptism of Jesus. And as I led worship yesterday, um, I had my, uh, my pewter, my, um, what is it? It's a pitcher, that's it is. It's a pitcher that I use for baptism and a shell which comes from New Zealand, which I use when I baptise infants. So I want to read those two readings to you today from Genesis and from Mark. And I'm going to read the first re reading uh, from the Trevor Dennis um, book of books, which I've used before. Um, just the first five verses of the whole of the Bible, first five verses of the Hebrew Scriptures from Genesis. In the beginning, before the world began, there was nothing. Nothing but God in the dark and a heap of water and God's Spirit like a fresh wind blowing, like a wild bird flying. Then, into the dark, God spoke. Let there be light, he cried. And there was. And God looked at the light and said, How beautiful you are. Your name is Day. He looked at the darkness and said, your name is night. And there was morning and there was evening, the world's first day. Let's pray. God, our creator. You have given us freedom to choose between darkness and light. 
we dedicate this time to you. Fill it with the lights of your presence. God, our creator, we have filled time and space with selfishness. We give time and space back to you. Stretch us by the expanse of your presence. God, our creator, your voice raised dry ground so tree and flower took root. We ask you to speak through us. May our words sow the seeds of your grace. God, our creator, you oversee the journeyings of many moons and many suns. We commit our feet to walk in your paths until seasons and stars are no more. God, our creator, deep seas and wide skies are teeming with fruitful creatures. We offer to you our shallow minds and narrow hearts, open to be filled by you. God, our creator, we have been made in your image and we place ourselves back into your hands. Complete in us your purpose and pattern. God, our creator, no longer in darkness, nothing held back, listening and following, dedicated and holy. May we rest in your presence now and in the world to come. Amen. So that reading I read from uh, Genesis and I'm going to read um, an account of the baptism of Jesus of which there are several in the Gospels but this one told by Mark. So a prayer as we prepare to hear that reading. Gracious God, whose life was made known in the weakness of a child, your son, who, when the time was right, went out to the desert to be baptised by John. Grant us such humility of mind and heart that with an obedient spirit we may wait upon you in adoration and thanksgiving. All honour and praise be given to you, our God. Loving God, we long to learn the truths of Christ, to seek courage to follow in the ways of Christ, and in the spirit of Christ, to meditate on the purpose of life. Grant us grace to be open to Christ's leading and to use our minds and imaginations, our experience and relationships in the service of Christ's kingdom. Amen. So reading from Mark chapter 1. John proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. 
You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit rests on Jesus and a voice from heaven announcing God's pleasure with him. A supernatural event. A supernatural event is something that's attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding or the laws of nature. Supernatural isn't magic, it isn't science fiction, but it is something which we have no explanation for other than a divine intervention. Are we meant to analyse it forensically? Are we meant to wonder, well, how did that happen? Or is it a much more productive and powerful question to ask, why did it happen? Why? Well, it at the very least confirms and affirms the identity of Jesus. It establishes the relationship between the Son and the Father and there's all kinds of things wrapped up in that relationship and in this image. Jesus has God's authority. Jesus has God's affirmation. He has God's confidence and support. Because of the Holy Spirit resting on Jesus, emboldening him and empowering him. And I just want to remind you and me this evening that as far as God is concerned, we too are his beloved. The Holy Spirit rests on each one of us, just as the Holy Spirit rested on Jesus. And that Holy Spirit can empower and enable us and equip us to lead and live our lives. For God. It's pretty awesome. And you know, sometimes it's it's just enough to sit with that thought that the Holy Spirit that was there at creation, the Holy Spirit that came when Jesus was baptized, is the same living and vital Holy Spirit powerfully at work in the world today and in and through our lives. Remember, we do nothing in our own strength, but in the strength of God. Let's pray. Lord God, how awesome you are. Your voice is powerful and majestic. Once the earth was without shape, dark and empty. Then you spoke, awesome God, and light shone. You separated the light from the darkness. The whole world changed. You later sent your son, Jesus, to live and walk among us on the earth a ministry heralded by John the Baptist, who baptised Jesus. The whole world changed. The sky split open and your Holy Spirit came down as a dove. And then you spoke, awesome God, and continue to speak today through your Holy Spirit all majestic, awesome, all powerful God, we adore your holy name. Amen. Found some prayers in a wonderful resource. Um, I've got several of these books by uh, Ray Simpson and uh, they are liturgies and prayers from Lindy's farm. Let's pray.
the light of Christ. Open our eyes to your presence shining among us. Jesus, truly God, truly human, your greatness holds the universe. Your goodness beckons us. Your wisdom searches us. Your generosity enriches us. Your strength spurs us. Your mercy frees us. The face of Christ now shines upon us. May our hearts become bright with the light of God. Draw us to your light. May your glory spread across the earth and may people see your wonder. Glory to God. Glory to God creating. Glory to God redeeming. Glory to God lighting up the world. And as we continue in this season of Epiphany, in the coming of the wise three, you were revealed as a king. In your entering into the baptismal waters, you were revealed as Christ. In your changing of water into wine, you revealed a new creation. Transform our poverty into riches. Transform our darkness into light. We give thanks for the signs of your presence in the world. So often we can see signs of God's presence in the world and in our lives. And then there are times when God's presence seems to be missing or absent. But of course it is never absent in those times when we weep and are frustrated by what happens in the world. God too weeps and is frustrated and despairs over the selfishness and greed and the abuse of power and the natural disasters which happen across the world on a daily basis. So let us pray. Eternal God, it does feel as if our whole world has changed this year. And yet in you there is stability and the opportunity of a new beginning. So we pray now for those whose lives are in turmoil. Those whose lives have been turned upside down. Those who feel lost. For all who hurt, for all who are lonely, for all who are desperate for the touch of their family. May they feel supported and find fresh hope in you, Lord. And we ask that you use our prayers in the name of Jesus to strengthen them. We pray for those for whom lockdown has come as a relief, for those who now feel safer. But we pray too for those who now feel desperate, worried about the future, their jobs, their finances and their mental health. May they feel supported and find fresh hope in you, Lord. And we ask that you use our prayers in and through the name of Jesus to strengthen them.
We pray for children and young adults as their schooling and education is disrupted. We pray for those who enjoy learning from home. We pray too for those who will lose confidence. We pray too for those who put so much pressure on themselves that being at home means that they spend all of their time trying to catch up and keep up with schoolwork. We pray for those who miss their friends, who feel vulnerable, and of course we remember their parents, the parents of all children, the parents of children with special needs struggling to cope on their own. And we continue to pray for teachers and their families, for administrative staff and all those who feel overwhelmed who feel overwhelmed and under-resourced. May they feel supported by you, Lord, and find fresh hope. Loving God, use our prayers in the name of Jesus to strengthen them. We pray for the people of a divided America at this time of political and racial tension and transition. Lord, use our prayers in the name of Jesus to strengthen all those who cry to you. We pray for all those who are victims of disaster. For those who have been injured or lost their homes and loved ones in the severe weather, we think of those in Australia battered by cyclones. We pray for those whose work in, is in the emergency services, whose work is dangerous and traumatic. We pray for those in refugee camps with little protection from the weather, for those who sleep rough, for those who cannot afford to heat their homes, for all who face the elements of this created world. May they feel supported and find hope in you, Lord. We ask that you use our prayers in the name of Jesus to strengthen them. We pray for the victims and the families of those who were lost in the Indonesian air disaster. And we pray for one another for our families and our communities and our church fellowships. May we support those who are unwell or grieving. May we bring fresh hope to those who feel forgotten and those who are vulnerable. And may we, both practically and prayerfully, Share our faith in your Son, Jesus, in whose name we entrust these prayers to you. Amen. Coronavirus is a terrible thing, but there is other Thing, there are other things going on, aren't there, which we mustn't forget to pray for. We can't remain too inward looking. So, what hymn for me this evening? I wonder if you can guess which hymn I'm going to sing 
It's from the section of Singing the Faith that is entitled The Gift and the Work of the Holy Spirit. It is one of my favourites. It is a song written by John Bell and Graham Moore um, and we've got an accompaniment this evening so I'm going to sing to you. And if you've got a Singing the Faith to hand it's hymn number 393. She sits like a bird, brooding on the waters, hovering on the chaos of the world's first day. She sighs and she sings, mother in creation, waiting to give birth to all the world will say. She wings all the earth, resting where she wishes, lighting close at hand or soaring through the skies. She nests in the womb, welcoming each wonder, nourishing potential hidden to our eyes. She dances in fire, startling her spectators, waking tongues of ecstasy where dumbness reigned. As she weaves and inspires, all whose hearts are open, nor can she be captured, silenced or restrained. For she is the spirit, one with God in essence, gifted by the Saviour in eternal love. And she is the key, opening the scriptures, enemy of apathy and heavenly dove. The blessing this evening is an ancient one known as the Aaronic Blessing. It's the one which is used in the service of baptism. The Lord bless you and keep you and be gracious to you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. I'll be back here at five o'clock tomorrow evening on Tuesday here in the She Shed. I hope you have a restful and peaceful evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. God bless.